Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna and today we're finally beginning another region on our channel abdomen and pelvis let's begin with abdomen first where is the abdomen exactly located so the abdomen is located just beneath the diaphragm so if you remember we had the thorax and the thorax ended right here with the diaphragm so the lower part of the trunk is known as the abdomen superiorly you can see the xiphoid process if you remember we had the sternum ending in a tapering small end called the xiphoid process and below the lower limit of the abdomen is the pubic symphysis where the two hip bones meet in the midline we are going to talk about the important landmarks of the abdomen all right so beginning with first we have the umbilicus you all know what that is it is the belly button in layman terms now the umbilicus you should know exactly where everything is located let's talk about the xiphoid process how can we uh, decipher the location of the various landmarks of the abdomen well that's easy we have a whole vertebra running on the back so why not locate every part in relation to the number of the vertebra so the xiphoid process is located on the t9 vertebra what about the umbilicus now the umbilicus is located at the junction of l3 and l4 the iliac crests have the highest point called the iliac tubercle if you remember it was 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine this is located on the l4 level of the vertebra now that we've discussed various important landmarks now we're going to discuss a couple of planes of the abdomen now what are planes planes are basically an imaginary lines that are passing through specific areas so let's talk about the first plane we have on the abdomen the plane that passes through the two tubercles or the highest points of the iliac crests this is known as the transtubercular plane transtubercular plane lies at the level of l5 vertebra so it's very necessary you remember these important levels and then we have two planes the right lateral and the left lateral planes these planes are basically going to pass from the middle of the clavicle so these are basically mid clavicular lines and they extend all the way till the mid inguinal point below what is the mid inguinal point it is the midpoint that is lies midway between the pubic tubercle and the anterior superior iliac spine now this will be discussed further when we talk about the ingu inguinal ligament all right so two planes this is the right lateral this is the left lateral plane let's talk about another important plane this is known as the transpyloric plane it's very important for you to know this plane what is the significance of this plane it lies at the level of l1 vertebra and it crosses the tip of the ninth costal cartilage in the rib cage there was a ninth rib now the right ninth rib anteriorly would end in a uh, costal cartilage so the tip of the ninth costal cartilage is where the transpyloric plane is anteriorly located while posteriorly it passes through the l1 very important because what will be asked from it is where does it lie so you'll say l1 and tip of the ninth costal cartilage and then the second question will be that what are the various structures that it touches while it is passing it passes through the following structures for that i have made a mnemonic it goes like hop fund so h is for the hyla or hilum of the two kidneys hilums o is for the origin of the superior mesenteric artery p is for two things first thing very important pylorus of the stomach hence why it is named the transpyloric plane and another thing is the portal vein the hepatic portal vein then we have the f this is fu the fundus of gall bladder and then we have n is for the neck of the pancreas and d is for the duodeno jejunal junction definitely these are going to be terms that you haven't heard of before and that is because obviously we are just starting the introductory chapter of the abdomen there is nothing to worry about though because soon you will understand very well all of these things as we move further in the topic 
so having said these planes the lateral the left lateral passing through the mid clavicular meeting vinyl points and then the trans pyloric plane and then the trans tubercular plane our abdominal cavity is divided into nine regions these nine regions are very important to learn specific names so let's suppose this is the right and this is the left side this is the right hypo chondrium why because it lies right below the cartilages the costal margin so chondrium and then the left hypochondrium similarly then we have this zone is known as the epigastrium going below obviously this region will be known as the umbilical region and then below is the hypogastrium these two regions are known as the lumbar regions finally close to the iliac crest these are known as the right and left iliac regions sorry about that so these are the various regions of the abdomen what is the point of dividing the abdomen into these regions basically there are certain abdominal organs that lie in certain regions so if there is any patient presents to you with any kind of pain or discomfort in the abdomen first you specify which region it is and when you know what the region is you will know what organ might be involved for instance in the right hypochondrium mostly the liver lies pathologies related to the liver can cause issues in the right hypochondrium in the right iliac fossa very infamous organ the appendix lies so any pain in the right iliac fossa you know there is a problem in the appendix in the left hypochondrium are the stomach and the spleen in the epigastrium mostly lie the duodenum in the hypogastrium is your bladder so overall these regions are very helpful to specify where the various abdominal organs lie which you'll study further we have talked about a couple of planes now we can move ahead and talk about other planes that are also important so there is another plane uh, let's suppose this is the costal margin that i was talking about all right this is the costal margin although the diaphragm lies above the costal margin you, we all know that the thoracic cage goes a little lower all right so the costal margins now these are very important and this is the xiphoid process there is a transverse plane that passes through the lower parts of the costal margins this is known as the subcostal plane and then there is the median plane of the abdomen in the median plane of the abdomen this can also be known as the linea alba lateral to this median furrow we have a line running from the pubic tubercle all the way laterally till the tip of the ninth costal cartilage these are the two th these are two lines are known as the linea semilunaris we have the rectus abdominis covered with a rectus sheath basically the marks that i am trying to tell you are the midpoint which is the linea alba and the margins of this muscle of the two linea semilunaris all right not only is the abdomen divided into nine regions but it's also divided into four quadrants and this is done via the first plane is known as the trans umbilical plane which is a transverse line passing through the umbilical region and another plane which is the median plane basically dividing your abdomen into four quadrants the four quadrants are the right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower quadrant left lower quadrant so overall you can see that there are four quadrants and nine regions of the abdomen however these nine regions are more specific in relation to the abdomen what are the various layers in the abdomen whenever you dissect the abdomen what layers will you come across first comes the skin then comes your superficial fascia then come the various muscles after the muscle is the deep fascia or you can say the fascia that is that is named after various regions so if it's on the transversus abdominis it's known as the fascia transversalis if it is over the diaphragm it's the diaphragmatic fascia so whatever whichever region it's covering uh, it's going to uh, acquire that name all right and then we have the extra peritoneal connective tissue after which we will encounter the peritoneum if you all remember we studied in the heart we studied in the lungs that there is a covering around viscera so in the heart there was the pericardium in the lungs there were the pleura here we have the peritoneum covering all the abdominal organs we will go into the depth of this topic later 
In the next video, we will discuss the fascia of the abdomen. Thank you so much for watching.